Well, Japan is home to a lot of uh, very high quality global names, mm -hmm. uh, but they are traded at. Such as? Uh, such, such as, as uh, uh, we have companies like Toyota, Japan Tobacco. Uh, we also have uh, global industrials name, such as Fanac, which is a global market leader in uh, robotics. Mm -hmm. But uh, being headquartered in Japan and traded in Japan, uh, sometimes valuations are at a discount compared to the US or Europe. So you can access to these high quality global names at a discount just because they are listed in Japan. So the markets are one thing. How about the economy? How is the economy in Japan right mm -hmm. now? Well, Japan had a very strong run over the past five years or so after the Prime Minister Abe came into play in 2013. Uh, he had three arrows uh, to revitalize Japan. The first arrow was monetary easing. Mm -hmm. The second arrow was fiscal stimulus. And third arrow was uh, stru structural reform, which he is to uh, continue to do so. And, ha and how are investors reacting to Abe's three arrows then? <laughs> okay. So the first two arrows were quite easy to implement. Monetary easing and fiscal stimulus. You just need to pump more money. And that's already uh, came into play. And as a result, uh, dollar yen uh, weakened a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so as the foreign investors uh, came into play, uh, to buy uh, his uh, Abenomics. But the issue is the third arrow, structural reform. How the, he can um, continue with this uh, reform will be the key to uh, forecast how uh, the economy will perform and, and from does that, here on. But does that um, lead to some uncertainty within investors right now? Mm -hmm. um, so some investors are sceptical uh, about how Abe can perform from here on especially when his support rate is coming off recently uh, with the scandal that he's mm -hmm. facing. Um, my personal view is that uh, to pump up his support rate again, uh, because he wants to obviously keep on his uh, term until 2021, which will be his full term, uh, he needs to keep up the support rate by pushing up the economy. Um, so he might uh, come up with uh, additional stimulus uh, package uh, for the equity market to uh, revitalize. And what role does the Bank of Japan play in all this? Mm -hmm. um, so Bank of Japan will support Abe's plan. Um, and uh, the central bank has a 2% inflation target, which is still quite far uh, from achieving. Uh, and they will need to continue with its uh, quantitative easing uh, for the economy to revitalize. And they've been buying a lot of um, exchange-traded funds, actually, haven't they? Yes, uh, they are. And the issue is that the consumption is not um, uh, hiking, mm. um, as uh, people were expecting. Uh, and there's a lot of issues regarding uh, this area. Uh, one will be demographics, uh, because the Japanese people are aging, and if you age, uh, you will spend less. So central bank needs to address this issue uh, with its policy. Now, you're over here on business. Just uh, explain to us a bit about the, the, the relationship between Swiss companies and, and Japan. OK. Um, we have a portfolio of uh, 40 names. And uh, one of our name, uh, Chugai Pharmaceutical, uh, they are the r subsidiary of Roche. And they do a lot of joint R&D with Roche. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they have very good practice incorporated from Roche. Um, another example will be Japan Tobacco. Uh, it's a Japanese tobacco company uh, holding third largest market share globally, but all of its overseas operations is actually carried out from Geneva. And Chugai had some scandals in, in, in recent times. How are they doing now? Uh, Chugai uh, has been seeing... Uh, one of its main drug uh, had some fatality, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, from our understanding and what Chugai is saying, it had nothing to do with uh, you guys' drugs. So, so far, we think uh, things will be OK. And what about the, the relation, this relationship between Japan and Switzerland? Are we making the most of it? Could ties be stronger? Could we do, be doing more business? Is there a lot more potential there, do you think? OK. Well, Japanese companies, they're generating a lot of free cash flows out of its uh, stable business or cash cow business in Japan. 
what they are now trying to do is to utilize that cash by acquiring uh, know-how from overseas. And Swiss is home to a lot of high technology companies, high quality brands, which Japanese companies can actually tap on, like uh, we recently saw from uh, SoftBank Steel with Swiss Re. Yes, well, I mean, how significant is that if SoftBank does secure a minority stake in, in the Swiss reinsurer? Mm -hmm. Um, Swiss Re is very interesting in terms of their uh, branding power and their market position. And uh, it will start from a monetary stake, uh, but SoftBank actually has a lot of fund, uh, funding from the Middle East, uh, which um, they would try to utilize and uh, try to incorporate uh, the branding know-how from uh, and the business model uh, from Swiss Re. So that's one example that the Japanese companies are trying to utilize their excess capital. Mm -hmm.